Hey everybody, and welcome back to our Detroit Lions preview show here at MLive. I am Kyle Mikey. And I'm Nate Atkins. All right, it's a week six matchup. Lions going down to the Big Easy facing the Saints, a place they've had some success recently, uh, but trying to lick their wounds a little bit from a tough loss last week against Carolina. First down, Nate, the, the offense has been a huge issue for the Lions, going back now for basically a month. Didn't, Matthew Stafford didn't pass for a touchdown to the fourth quarter. He's been sacked now 12 times. He's got upper leg injuries, lower leg injury. Go down to a place where you know the Saints have won two in a row. They, they just shut out um, uh, their last opponent, and they also beat the Carolina Panthers. It's going to be a very mm -hmm. tough matchup for the Lions. Yeah, there's no doubt. They do have a lot of success against the Saints, and they can't get out of their own way right now. I mean, they, they cannot protect Matthew Stafford. And last year, I got to sit down with Jim Bob Cooter, and we talked about kind of this offense and what he looks for. And so much of it was about the pass protection. He wants a quarterback who's not only avoiding hits, but who's confident in his protections. Because right now, until Taylor Decker's back, I think they just have to manage what they have on the offensive line. All right, second down, we've got another rear question, so let's consult the electric Twitter machine here. Uh, this one comes from Brandon Knapp. Who starts in place of Haloti Nada? Big news this week, obviously, is the injury to Haloti Nada, initially believed to be an elbow. It's actually a, um, a bicep. Based on what I'm hearing, I, I believe he's going to have surgery, and I believe that will end his season. Uh, so the Lions have a big void in the middle of their defense. I think we see a lot of Akeem Spence going forward. He's been a good player off the Lions bench. Jeremiah Ledbetter has been a surprising contributor, even as a rookie. They like to describe this defensive line kind of like a hockey line, the way they rotate them in and out all the time because they don't have Ziggy Ansah at every position. They've got kind of nondescript guys. But I think Akeem Spence is the most established in this system right now. But those other guys, Ledbetter, Cornelius Washington, and Dayton Jones, they can rotate from end to tackle based on the matchup and the situation. I think they'll keep that fluid. What's hard to replace is Haloti not as, obviously his run stuffing, but also his leadership in that room for these young guys. Okay, Nate, third down. We've, we have to talk about Eric Ebron because everyone else is talking about <laughs> Eric Ebron. There, there is not a more frustrating player on this team than that guy. It's what we see in practice. It's even what we see in games. He, he's still getting open. There's a reason he's been targeted 23 times <laughs> among the leaders on the team. And he's caught 11 of them. 11. I, I don't have a calculator, but that's like half the time. That's not very good, particularly for a player who's averaging about seven yards a catch. It's just unacceptable, especially from a player who doesn't block. Mm -hmm. that he, he's supposed to catch the football. That's all he does, and he's still not doing it. That's a real problem. On the bright side, the Lions do have Darren Fells. Uh, they signed him in the offseason to be a blocker. Now he's suddenly their best pass catcher, or certainly their most reliable pass catcher. Yeah, this is the third straight year now that Darren Fells has caught at least 75% of his passes. So he's really the opposite of what Eric Ebron is. They kind of knew that coming in. They wanted him to be uh, more of that wide tight end, the guy who blocks, the guy who just sort of runs simpler routes. But right now they need that. They need a guy moving the chains because they're not doing it in this offense. You start to wonder about the confidence with Eric Ebron. He says the boos aren't getting to them, but then he tweets about the boos <laughs> a minute after he says that. It just gets you wondering with the lulls that he has. And until he breaks out of that and shows a little bit of consistency, I think they have to go more with Darren Fells. All right, it's fourth down, Nate. You've picked right about 100 times in a row. Uh, you're on fire. What do you got for us this week? I'm going with Saints 24, Lions 21. Coming into this year, I thought this was a game the Lions would have. They have owned the Saints in recent years, owned them in their building. But their offense is so out of sorts right now. We talked about it with the offensive line, with the banged up Stafford. It's hard to go with that unit under the road and beat Drew Brees with the way he's playing in his own building. For once, I agree with you. I believe it's going to be a Saints victory on Sunday, 27-24 over the Lions. Matthew Stafford has been very good in the Superdome the past couple of times down there, but he's not the same quarterback right now. He's hurting. He's got injuries all over the place. He's slowed. He's got no protection right now. This just does not look good, I think, for the Lions this week. Mm -hmm. uh, down in New Orleans. All right, that's what we got for this week. Uh, Lions are off next week, but they return to action the, the, the following week for a, a Sunday night game against the Steelers. Should be a very intriguing matchup. We want to hear from you guys going into it. So as always, hit us up on the Twitter machine right there. Uh, I'm Kyle. I'm Nate. We're MLive. Keep it right here.